A tax haven is defined as a country or place with very low, effective rates of taxation for foreign investors. Headline rates may be higher. In some traditional definitions, a tax haven also offers financial secrecy. However, while countries with high levels of secrecy but also high rates of taxation e.g. the United States and Germany in the Financial Secrecy Index FSI, rankings, can feature in some tax haven lists, they are not universally considered as tax havens. In contrast, countries with lower levels of secrecy but also low effective rates of taxation e.g. Ireland in the FSI rankings, appear in most section tax haven lists. The consensus around effective tax rates has led academics to note that the term tax haven and offshore financial center are almost synonymous. Traditional tax havens, like Jersey, are open about zero rates of taxation, but as a consequence have limited bilateral tax treaties. Modern corporate tax havens have non zero headline rates of taxation and high levels of OECD compliance, and thus have large networks of bilateral tax treaties. However, their base erosion and profit shifting BEPS tools enable corporates to achieve effective tax rates closer to zero, not just in the haven but in all countries with which the haven has tax treaties, putting them on tax haven lists. According to modern studies, the section top 10 tax havens include corporate focused havens like the Netherlands, Singapore, Ireland and the UK, while Luxembourg, Hong Kong, the Caribbean, the Caymans, Bermuda and the British Virgin Islands and Switzerland feature as both major traditional tax havens and major corporate tax havens. Corporate tax havens often serve as conduits to traditional tax havens. Use of tax havens results in a loss of tax revenues to countries which are not tax havens. Estimates of the section financial scale of taxes avoided vary, but the most credible have a range of US$100 minus $250 billion per annum. In addition, capital held in tax havens can permanently leave the tax base, base erosion. Estimates of capital held in tax havens also vary. The most credible estimates are between 7 United States dollars minus 10 trillion up to 10% of global assets. The harm of traditional and corporate tax havens has been particularly noted in developing nations, where the tax revenues are needed to build infrastructure. Over 15% of countries are sometimes labeled tax havens. Tax havens are mostly successful and well governed economies, and being a haven has brought prosperity. The top 10 to 15 GDP per capita countries, excluding oil and gas exporters, are tax havens. Because of section inflated GDP per capita due to accounting BEPS flows, havens are prone to over leverage international capital misprice the artificial debt to GDP. This can lead to severe credit cycles and or property, banking crises when international capital flows are repriced. Ireland's Celtic Tiger, and the subsequent financial crisis in 2009–13, is an example. Jersey is another. 
Research shows Section U.S. as the largest beneficiary, and use of tax havens by U.S. corporates maximized long-term U.S. exchequer receipts. The focus on combating tax havens, e.g., OECD IMF projects, has been on common standards, transparency, and data sharing. The rise of OECD compliant corporate tax havens, whose BEPS tools are responsible for most of the lost taxes, has led to criticism of this approach, versus actual taxes paid. Higher tax jurisdictions, such as the United States and many member states of the European Union, departed from the OECD BEPS project in 2017–18, to introduce anti-BEPS tax regimes, targeted raising net taxes paid by corporations in corporate tax havens e.g. the U.S. Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017. TCJA. GILTI beat FDII tax regimes and moved to a hybrid, territorial tax system, and proposed EU Digital Services Tax Regime, an EU common consolidated corporate tax base. Topic Definitions Topic Context There is no established consensus regarding a specific definition for what constitutes a tax haven. This is the conclusion from non-governmental organizations, such as the Tax Justice Network in 2018, from the 2008 investigation by the U.S. Government Accountability Office, from the 2015 investigation by the U.S. Congressional Research Service, from the 2017 investigation by the European Parliament, and from leading academic researchers of tax havens, the the issue, however, is material, as being labeled a «tax haven» has consequences for a country seeking to develop and trade under bilateral tax treaties. When Ireland was «blacklisted» by G20 member Brazil in 2016, bilateral trade declined. It is even more onerous for corporate tax havens, whose foreign multinationals rely on the haven's extensive network of bilateral tax treaties, through which the foreign multinationals execute BEPS transactions, rerouting global untaxed income to the haven. Academic non-quantitative 1994 to 2016 One of the first section important papers on tax havens was the 1994 Heinz Rice paper by James R Heinz Jr. It is the most cited paper on tax haven research, even in late 2017, and Heinz is the most cited author on tax haven research. As well as offering insights into tax havens, it took the view that the diversity of countries that become tax havens was so great that detailed definitions were inappropriate. Heinz merely noted that tax havens were, a group of countries with unusually low tax rates. Heinz reaffirmed this approach in a 2009 paper with Dhammaka Dharmapala. In December 2008, Dharmapala wrote that the OECD process had removed much of the need to include bank secrecy in any definition of a tax haven and that it was now, first and foremost, low or zero corporate tax rates, and this has become the general, financial dictionary, 
Definition of a tax haven – Heinz refined his definition in 2016 to incorporate research on section incentives for tax havens on governance, which is broadly accepted in the academic lexicon. Tax havens are typically small, well-governed states that impose low or zero tax rates on foreign investors. Topic OECD IMF 1998 to 2018 In April 1998 the OECD produced a definition of a tax haven as meeting 3 of 4 criteria It was produced as part of their harmful tax competition an emerging global issue initiative by 2000, when the OECD published their first list of tax havens, it included no OECD member countries as they were now all considered to have engaged in the OECD's new Global Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information for Tax Purposes, and therefore would not meet Criteria E and Criteria E. Because the OECD has never listed any of its 35 members as tax havens, Ireland, Luxembourg, the Netherlands and Switzerland are sometimes defined as the OECD tax havens. In 2017, only Trinidad and Tobago met the 1998 OECD definition, and it has fallen into disrepute. The fourth criterion was withdrawn after objections from the new U.S. Bush administration in 2001, and in the OECD's 2002 report the definition became two of three criteria. The 1998 OECD definition is most frequently invoked by the OECD tax havens. However, it has been discounted by tax haven academics, including the 2015 U.S. Congressional Research Service investigation into tax havens, as being restrictive, and enabling Heinz low tax havens e.g. to which the first criterion applies, to avoid the OECD definition by improving OECD corporation so the second and third criteria do not not apply. Thus, the evidence limited though it undoubtedly is, does not suggest any impact of the OECD initiative on tax haven activity. Thus, the OECD initiative cannot be expected to have much impact on corporate uses of tax havens, even if or when the initiative is fully implemented in April 2000. The Financial Stability Forum or FSF defined the related concept of an offshore financial center or OFC, which the IMF adopted in June 2000, producing a list of 40 six OFCs. The FSF IMF definition focused on the BEPS tools havens offer, and on Heinz's observation that the accounting flows from BEPS tools are out of proportion and thus distort the economic statistics of the haven. The FSF IMF list captured new corporate tax havens, such as the Netherlands, which Heinz considered too small in 1994. In April 2007, the IMF used a more quantitative approach to generate a list of 22 major OFCs, and in 2018 listed the eight major OFCs who handle 85% of all flows. From about 2010, tax academics considered OFCs and tax havens to be synonymous terms. Topic: Academic Quantitative 2010 to 2018. In October 2010, Heinz published a list of 52 tax havens, which he had scaled quantitatively by analyzing corporate investment flows. 
Heinz's largest havens were dominated by corporate tax havens, who Dharmapala noted in 2014 accounted for the bulk of global tax haven activity from BEPS tools. The Heinz 2010 list was the first to estimate the ten largest global tax havens, only two of which, Jersey and the British Virgin Isles, were on the OECD's 2000 list. In July 2017, the University of Amsterdam's CORPNET group ignored any definition of a tax haven and focused on a purely quantitative approach, analyzing 98 million global corporate connections on the Orbis database. CORPNET's lists of top 5 conduit OFCs, and top 5 sink OFCs, matched 9 of the top 10 havens in Heinz 2010 list, only differing in the United Kingdom, which only transformed their tax code in 2009–12. CORPNET's Conduit and SYNC OFC's study split the understanding of a tax haven into two classifications 24 SYNC OFC's, jurisdictions in which a disproportionate amount of value disappears from the economic system e.g. the traditional tax havens. 5 conduit OFCs, jurisdictions through which a disproportionate amount of value moves toward sink OFCs e.g. the modern corporate tax havens. In June 2018, tax academic Gabriel Zuckman et Alia published research that also ignored any definition of a tax haven but estimated the corporate profit shifting i.e. BEPS, and «enhanced corporate profitability» that Heinz and Dharmapala had noted. Zuckman pointed out that the CORPNET research underrepresented havens associated with U.S. technology firms, like Ireland and the Cayman Islands, as Google, Facebook and Apple do not appear on Orbis. Even so, Zuckman's 2018 list of top 10 havens also matched nine of the top 10 havens in Heinz 2010 list, but with Ireland as the largest global haven. These lists Heinz 2010, CORPNET 2017 and Zuckman 2018, and others, which followed a purely quantitative approach, showed a firm consensus around the largest corporate tax havens. <laughs> <laughs> Related definitions In October 2009, the Tax Justice Network introduced the Financial Secrecy Index FSI, and the term, "...secrecy jurisdiction", to highlight issues in regard to OECD-compliant countries who have high tax rates and do not appear on academic lists of tax havens, but have transparency issues. The FSI does not assess tax rates or BEPS flows in its calculation, but it is often misinterpreted as a tax haven definition in the financial media, particularly when it lists the US and Germany as major secrecy jurisdictions. However, many types of tax havens also rank as secrecy jurisdictions. Topic Groupings While tax havens are diverse and varied, tax academics sometimes recognize three major groupings of tax havens when discussing the history of their development. Topic European related tax havens 
As discussed in section history, the first recognized tax haven hub was the Zurich Zug Liechtenstein Triangle created in the mid 1920s, later joined by Luxembourg in 1929. Privacy and secrecy were established as an important aspect of European tax havens. However, modern European tax havens also include corporate focused tax havens, which maintain higher levels of OECD transparency, such as the Netherlands and Ireland. European tax havens act as an important part of the global flows to tax havens, with three of the five major global conduit OFCs being European e.g. the Netherlands, Switzerland, and Ireland. Four European-related tax havens appear in the various notable Section Top 10 tax havens lists, namely, the Netherlands, Ireland, Switzerland, and Luxembourg. <laughs> British Empire-related tax havens Many tax havens are former or current dependencies of the United Kingdom and still use the same core legal structures. Six British Empire-related tax havens appear in the section Top 10 Tax Havens lists, namely, Caribbean Tax Havens e.g. Bermuda, the British Virgin Islands, and the Cayman Islands, Channel Islands Tax Havens e.g. Jersey and Asian Tax Havens e.g. Singapore and Hong Kong. As discussed in Section History, the United Kingdom created its first non-resident company in 1929, and led the Eurodollar offshore financial centre market post-World War II, since the reform of its corporate tax code in 2009-2012, the UK has re-emerged as a major corporate-focused tax haven. Two of the five major global conduit OFCs are from this grouping, e.g., the UK and Singapore. In November 2009, Michael Foote, a former Bank of England official and Bahamas Bank inspector, delivered an integrated report on the three British Crown dependencies Guernsey, Isle of Man and Jersey, and the six overseas territories Anguilla, Bermuda, British Virgin Islands, Cayman Islands, Gibraltar, Turks and Caicos Islands, to identify the opportunities and challenges as offshore financial centres for the HUM Treasury. Topic. Emerging market-related tax havens As discussed in section history, most of these tax havens date from the late 1960s and effectively copied the structures and services of the above groups. Most of these tax havens are not OECD members, or in the case of British Empire-related tax havens, don't have a senior OECD member at their core. Some have suffered setbacks during various OECD initiatives to curb tax havens e.g. Vanuatu and Samoa. However, others such as Taiwan for Asiapac, and Mauritius for Africa, have grown materially in the past decades. Taiwan has been described as Switzerland of Asia, with a focus on secrecy. While no emerging market-related tax haven ranks in the five major global conduit OFCs or any section top 10 tax havens lists, both Taiwan and Mauritius rank in the top 10 global SINC OFCs. <laughs> lists Topic. Types of lists 
Three main types of tax haven lists have been produced to date. Research also highlights proxy indicators, of which the two most prominent are Topic top 10 tax havens The post-2010 rise in quantitative techniques of identifying tax havens has resulted in a more stable list of the largest tax havens. Dharmapala notes that as corporate BEPS flows dominate tax haven activity, these are mostly corporate tax havens. Nine of the top ten tax havens in Gabriel Zuckman's June 2018 study also appear in the top ten lists of the two other quantitative studies since 2010. Four of the top five conduit OFCs are represented, however, the UK only transformed its tax code in 2009–2012. All five of the top five SYNC OFCs are represented, although Jersey only appears in the Heinz 2010 list. The studies capture the rise of Ireland and Singapore, both major regional headquarters for some of the largest BEPS tool users, Apple, Google and Facebook. In Q1 2015, Apple completed the largest BEPS action in history, when it shifted US$300 billion of IP to Ireland, which Nobel Prize economist Paul Krugman called «leprechaun economics». In September 2018, using TCJA repatriation tax data, the NBER listed the key tax havens as, Ireland, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Switzerland, Singapore, Bermuda and the Caribbean havens. Asterisk appears as a top 10 tax haven in all three lists. Nine major tax havens meet this criterion: Ireland, Singapore, Switzerland, and the Netherlands, the Conduit OFCs, and the Cayman Islands, British Virgin Islands, Luxembourg, Hong Kong, and Bermuda, the Sink OFCs. Also appears as one of five conduit OFC Ireland, Singapore, Switzerland, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom. In CORPNET's 2017 research, or also appears as a top five SYNC OFC British Virgin Islands, Luxembourg, Hong Kong. Jersey, Bermuda, in CORPNET's 2017 research. Delta identified on the first, and largest, OECD 2000 list of 35 tax havens the OECD list only contained Trinidad and Tobago by 2017. The strongest consensus amongst academics regarding the world's largest tax havens is therefore, Ireland, Singapore, Switzerland and the Netherlands the major conduit OFCs, and the Cayman Islands, British Virgin Islands, Luxembourg, Hong Kong and Bermuda the major SYNC OFCs, with the United Kingdom a major conduit OFC still in transformation. Of these ten major havens, all except the United Kingdom and the Netherlands featured on the original Heinz Rice 1994 list. The United Kingdom was not a tax haven in 1994, and Heinz estimated the Netherlands's effective tax rate in 1994 at over 20% Heinz identified Ireland as having the lowest effective tax rate at 4%. Four of them, Ireland, Singapore, Switzerland three of the five top conduit OFCs, and Hong Kong a top five SYNC OFC, featured in the Heinz Rice 1994 list seven major tax havens subcategory, highlighting a lack of progress in curtailing tax havens. In terms of proxy indicators, this list, excluding Canada, contains all seven of the countries that received more than one U.S. tax inversion since 1982 see here. 
In addition, six of these major tax havens are in the top 15 GDP per capita, and of the four others, three of them, the Caribbean locations, are not included in IMF World Bank GDP per capita tables. In a June 2018 joint IMF report into the effect of BEPS flows on global economic data, eight of the above excluding Switzerland and the United Kingdom were cited as the world's leading tax havens. Topic top 20 tax havens The longest list from non-governmental, quantitative research on tax havens is the University of Amsterdam CORPNET July 2017 Conduit and SYNC OFCs study, at 29 5 Conduit OFCs and 25 SYNC OFCs. The following are the 20 largest 5 conduit OFCs and 15 sync OFCs, which reconcile with other main lists as follows, asterisk appears in as a section top 10 tax havens in all three quantitative lists, Heinz 2010, ITEP 2017 and Zuckman 2018 above, all nine such section top 10 tax havens are listed below. Club Suit appears on the James Hines 2010 list of 52 tax havens, 17 of the 20 locations below, are on the James Hines 2010 list. Delta identified on the largest OECD 2000 list of 35 tax havens the OECD list only contained Trinidad and Tobago by 2017, only four locations below were ever on an OECD list. Up Down Arrow identified on the European Union's first 2017 list of 17 tax havens, only one location below is on the EU 2017 list. Sovereign states that feature mainly as major corporate tax havens are, asterisk Ireland, a major corporate tax haven, and ranked by tax academics as the largest, leader in IP-based BEPS tools e.g. double Irish, but also debt-based BEPS tools. Asterisk Singapore, the major corporate tax haven for Asia APAC headquarters for most U.S. technology firms, and key conduit to core Asian SYNC OFCs, Hong Kong and Taiwan. Asterisk Netherlands, a major corporate tax haven, and the largest conduit OFC via its IP-based BEPS tools e.g. Dutch Sandwich, traditional leader in debt-based BEPS tools. United Kingdom, rising corporate tax haven after restructuring tax code in 2009–12, 17 of the 24 SYNC OFCs are former, or current, dependencies of the UK. See SYNC OFC table sovereign states that feature as both major corporate tax havens and major traditional tax havens, include, asterisk Switzerland, both a major traditional tax haven or SYNC OFC, and a major corporate tax haven or conduit OFC, and strongly linked to major SYNC OFC, Jersey. Asterisk Luxembourg, one of the largest SYNC OFCs in the world a terminus for many corporate tax havens, especially Ireland and the Netherlands. Asterisk Hong Kong, the Luxembourg of Asia, and almost as large a SYNC OFC as Luxembourg, tied to APAC's largest corporate tax haven, Singapore. Sovereign or semi-sovereign states that feature mainly as traditional tax havens but have non-zero tax rates, include, Club Suit Cyprus, damaged its reputation during the financial crisis when the Cypriot banking system nearly collapsed, however reappearing in top 10 lists. 
Taiwan, major traditional tax haven for APAC, and described by the Tax Justice Network as the Switzerland of Asia. Club Suit Malta, an emerging tax haven inside the EU, which has been a target of wider media scrutiny. Sub national states that are very traditional tax havens, i.e., explicit 0% rate of tax, include Fuller List in table opposite. Club Suit Delta Jersey United Kingdom Dependency, still a major traditional tax haven, the CORPNET research identifies a very strong connection with conduit OFC Switzerland e.g. Switzerland is increasingly relying on Jersey as a traditional tax haven, issues of financial stability. Club suit Delta Isle of Man United Kingdom dependency, the failing tax haven, not in the CORPNET study discussed here, but included for completeness, current British overseas territories, see table opposite, where 17 of the 24 SINC OFCs, are current or past, UK. Dependencies, asterisk Delta British Virgin Islands, largest sink OFC in the world and regularly appears alongside the Caymans and Bermuda the Caribbean triad as a group. Asterisk Bermuda, does feature as a U.S. corporate tax haven, only second to Ireland as a destination for U.S. tax inversions. Asterisk Cayman Islands, also features as a major U.S. corporate tax haven, sixth most popular destination for U.S. corporate tax inversions. Club suit Delta Gibraltar, like the Isle of Man, has declined due to concerns, even by the U.K., over its practices. Club Suit Mauritius, has become a major tax haven for both SE Asia especially India and African economies, and now ranking 8th overall. Curaçao, the Dutch dependency ranked 8th on the Oxfam's tax haven list, and the 12th largest sink OFC, and recently made the EU's grey list. Club suit Delta Liechtenstein, long established very traditional European tax haven and just outside of the top 10 global SINC OFCs. Club suit Delta Bahamas, acts as both a traditional tax haven ranked 12th SINC OFC, and ranks 8th on the ITEP profits list figure 4, page 16 of Corporate Havens, third highest secrecy score on the FSI. Club suit Delta Up Down Aero Samoa, a traditional tax haven ranked 14th SINC OFC, used to have one of the highest secrecy scores on the FSI, since reduced moderately. Topic broad lists of tax havens Post-2010 research on tax havens is focused on quantitative analysis which can be ranked, and tends to ignore very small tax havens where data is limited as the haven is used for individual tax avoidance rather than corporate tax avoidance. The last credible broad unranked list of global tax havens is the James Hines 2010 list of 52 tax havens. It is shown below but expanded to 55 to include havens identified in the July 2017 conduit and SINC OFCs study that were not considered havens in 2010, namely the United Kingdom, Taiwan, and Curaçao. The James Hines 2010 list contains 34 of the original 35 OCED tax havens, and compared with the section top 10 tax havens and section top 20 tax havens above, show OECD processes focus on the compliance of tiny havens. Identified as one of the five conduits by CORPNET in 2017, the above list has five of the five. 
identified as one of the largest 24 sinks by CORPNET in 2017. The above list has 23 of the 24 Guyana missing. Up-down arrow identified on the European Union's first 2017 list of 17 tax havens. The above list contains 8 of the 17. Delta identified on the first and the largest OECD 2000 list of 35 tax havens. The OECD list only contained Trinidad and Tobago by 2017. The above list contains 34 of the 35 US Virgin Islands missing. Topic Unusual cases U.S. dedicated entities Delaware, United States, a unique, onshore, specialized haven with strong secrecy laws and a liberal incorporation regime, however federal and state tax apply see section history. Puerto Rico, United States, almost a corporate tax haven, concession by the US, but which the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 mostly removed. Major sovereign states which feature on financial secrecy lists, e.g. the Financial Secrecy Index, but not on corporate tax haven or traditional tax haven lists are United States, noted for secrecy, per the Financial Secrecy Index, see United States as a tax haven, makes a «controversial» appearance on some lists. Germany, similar to the US, Germany can be included on lists for its tax secrecy, per the Financial Secrecy Index neither the US or Germany have appeared on any tax haven lists by the main academic leaders in tax haven research, namely, James R. Hines Jr., Dhammaka Dharmapala or Gabriel Zuckman. There are no known cases of foreign firms executing tax inversions to the US or Germany for tax purposes, a basic characteristic of a corporate tax haven. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Former tax havens. Beirut, Lebanon formerly had a reputation as the only tax haven in the Middle East. However, this changed after the intra-bank crash of 1966, and the subsequent political and military deterioration of Lebanon dissuaded foreign use of the country as a tax haven. Liberia had a prosperous ship registration industry. The series of violent and bloody civil wars in the 1990s and early 2000s severely damaged confidence in the country. The fact that the ship registration business still continues is partly a testament to its early success, and partly a testament to moving the National Shipping Registry to New York, United States. Tangier had a short existence as a tax haven in the period between the end of effective control by the Spanish in 1945 until it was formally reunited with Morocco in 1956. Some Pacific Islands were tax havens but were curtailed by OECD demands for regulation and transparency in the late 1990s, on the threat of blacklisting. Vanuatu's Financial Services Commissioner said in May 2008 that his country would reform laws and cease being a tax haven. We've been associated with this stigma for a long time and we now aim to get away from being a tax haven. Topic: Scale.
Topic Overview Estimating the financial scale of tax havens is complicated by their inherent lack of transparency. Even jurisdictions that comply with OECD transparency requirements such as Ireland, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands, provide alternate secrecy tools e.g. trusts, QIAIFs and ULLs. For example, when the EU Commission discovered Apple's tax rate in Ireland was 0.005%, they found Apple's had used Irish ULLs to avoid filing Irish public accounts since the early 1990s. Additionally, there is sometimes confusion between figures that focus on the amount of annual taxes lost due to tax havens estimated to be in the hundreds of billions of USD, and figures that focus on the amount of capital residing in tax havens estimated to be in the trillions of USD. As of March 2019, the most credible methods for estimating the financial scale have been There have been many other guesstimates produced by NGOs which are either crude derivatives of the first method banking data and are often criticized for taking mistaken interpretations and conclusions from aggregate global banking and financial data to produce unsound estimates Topic price of offshore revisited 2012 to 2014 a notable study on the financial effect was price of offshore revisited in 2012 to 2014 by former McKinsey and Company chief economist James S Henry Henry did the study for the Tax Justice Network TJN, and as part of his analysis, chronicled the history of past financial estimates by various organizations. Henry used mainly global banking data from various regulatory sources to estimate that. Henry's credibility and the depth of this analysis meant that the report attracted international attention. The TJN supplemented his report with another report on the consequences of the analysis in terms of global inequality and lost revenues to developing economies. The report was criticized by a 2013 report funded by Jersey Finance, a lobby group for the financial services sector in Jersey, and written by two U.S. academics, Richard Morris's and Andrew Gordon. In 2014, the TJN issued a report responding to these criticisms. Topic: The Hidden Wealth of Nations, 2015. In 2015, French tax economist Gabriel Zuckman published the The Hidden Wealth of Nations, which used global national accounts data to calculate the quantum of net foreign asset positions of rich countries, which are unreported because they are located in tax havens. Zuckman estimated that circa 8 10% of the global financial wealth of households, or over US$7.6 trillion, United States dollars, was held in tax havens. Zuckman followed up his 2015 book with several co authored papers that focused on corporate use of tax havens, titled The Missing Profits of Nations 2016 2018, and The Exorbitant Tax tax privilege 2018 which showed that corporations shield over 250 billion united states dollars per annum from taxes Zuckman showed that almost half of these are U.S. corporations, and that it was the driver of how U.S. corporations built up offshore cash deposits of one United States dollar to two trillion since 2004. 
Zuckman's et alia analysis showed that global GDP figures were materially distorted by multinational BEPS flows. Topic: OECD reports 2007-2017. In 2007, the OECD estimated that capital held offshore amounted to between five United States dollars to seven trillion, making up approximately six to eight percent of total global investments under management. In 2017, as part of the OECD BEPS project, it estimated that between US$100 to US$240 billion in corporate profits were being shielded from taxation via BEPS activities carried out through tax haven type jurisdictions. Incentives Topic Prosperity In several research papers, James R. Hines Jr. showed that tax havens were typically small but well governed nations and that being a tax haven had brought significant prosperity. In 2009, Heinz and Dharmapala suggested that roughly 15% of countries are tax havens, but they wondered why more countries had not become tax havens given the observable economic prosperity it could bring. There are roughly 40 major tax havens in the world today, but the sizable apparent economic returns to becoming a tax haven raise the question of why there are not more. Heinz and Dharmapala concluded that governance was a major issue for smaller countries in trying to become tax havens. Only countries with strong governance and legislation which was trusted by foreign corporates and investors, would become tax havens. Heinz and Dharmapala's positive view on the financial benefits of becoming a tax haven, as well as being two of the major academic leaders into tax haven research, put them in sharp conflict with non-governmental organizations advocating tax justice, such as the Tax Justice Network, who accused them as promoting tax avoidance. Topic. GDP per capita Tax havens have high GDP per capita rankings, as their headline economic statistics are artificially inflated by the BEPS flows that add to the haven's GDP, but are not taxable in the haven. As the largest facilitators of BEPS flows, corporate-focused tax havens, in particular, make up most of the top 10 to 15 GDP per capita tables, excluding oil and gas nations see table below. Research into tax havens suggest a high GDP per capita score, in the absence of material natural resources, as an important proxy indicator of a tax haven. At the core of the FSFIMF definition of an offshore financial center is a country where the financial BEPS flows are out of proportion to the size of the indigenous economy. Apple's Q1 2015, Leprechaun Economics, BEPS transaction in Ireland was a dramatic example, which caused Ireland to abandon its GDP and GNP metrics in February 2017, in favour of a new metric, Modified Gross National Income, or GNI asterisk. 
The artificial inflation of GDP can attract underpriced foreign capital who use the headline debt to GDP metric of the haven, thus producing phases of stronger economic growth. However, the increased leverage leads to more severe credit cycles, particularly where the artificial nature of the GDP is exposed to foreign investors. Notes Topic. Acceptance In 2018, noted tax haven economist, Gabriel Zuckman, showed that most corporate tax disputes are between high-tax jurisdictions, and not between high-tax and low-tax jurisdictions. Zuckman et alia research showed that disputes with major havens such as Ireland, Luxembourg and the Netherlands, are actually quite rare. We show theoretically and empirically that in the current international tax system, tax authorities of high-tax countries do not have incentives to combat profit shifting to tax havens. They instead focus their enforcement effort on relocating profits booked in other high-tax countries, in effect stealing revenue from each other. This policy failure can explain the persistence of profit shifting to low-tax countries despite the high costs involved for high-tax countries. Benefits Topic Promoters of Growth A controversial area of research into tax havens is the suggestion that tax havens actually promote global economic growth by solving perceived issues in the tax regimes of higher taxed nations e.g. the above discussion on the U.S. worldwide tax system as an example. Important academic leaders in tax haven research, such as Heinz, Dharmapala, and others, cite evidence that, in certain cases, tax havens appear to promote economic growth in higher tax countries, and can support beneficial hybrid tax regimes of higher taxes on domestic activity but lower taxes on international sourced capital or income. The effect of tax havens on economic welfare in high-tax countries is unclear, though the availability of tax havens appears to stimulate economic activity in nearby high-tax countries. Tax havens change the nature of tax competition among other countries, very possibly permitting them to sustain high domestic tax rates that are effectively mitigated for mobile international investors whose transactions are routed through tax havens. In fact, countries that lie close to tax havens have exhibited more rapid real income growth than have those further away, possibly in part as a result of financial flows and their market effects. The most cited paper on research into offshore financial centers OFCs, a closely related term to tax havens, noted the positive and negative aspects of OFCs on neighboring high tax, or source, economies, and marginally came out in favor of OFCs. Conclusion, using both bilateral and multilateral samples, we find empirically that successful offshore financial centers encourage bad behavior in source countries since they facilitate tax evasion and money laundering. Nevertheless, offshore financial centers created to facilitate undesirable activities can still have unintended positive consequences. We tentatively conclude that OFCs are better characterized as 
Symbionts. However, other notable tax academics strongly dispute these views, such as work by Slemrod and Wilson, who in their section Important Papers on Tax Havens, label tax havens as parasitic to jurisdictions with normal tax regimes, that can damage their economies. In addition, tax justice campaign groups have been equally critical of Heinz, and others, in these views. Research in June 2018 by the IMF showed that much of the foreign direct investment FDI, that came from tax havens into higher tax countries, had really originated from the higher tax country, and for example, that the largest source of FDI into the United Kingdom, was actually from the United Kingdom, but invested via tax havens. The boundaries with wider contested economic theories on the effects of corporate taxation on economic growth, and whether there should be corporate taxes are easy to blur. Other researchers that have examined tax havens, such as Zuckman, highlight the injustice of tax havens and see the effects as lost income for the development of society. It remains a controversial area with advocates on both sides. U.S. <laughs> tax receipts. A finding of the 1994 Heinz Rice paper, reaffirmed by others, was that low foreign tax rates from tax havens ultimately enhance U.S. tax collections. Heinz showed that as a result of paying no foreign taxes by using tax havens, U.S. multinationals avoided building up foreign tax credits that would reduce their U.S. tax liability. Heinz returned to this finding several times, and in his 2010 section Important Papers on Tax Havens, Treasure Islands, where he showed how U.S. multinationals used tax havens and BEPS tools to avoid Japanese taxes on their Japanese investments, noted that this was being confirmed by other empirical research at a company level. Heinz's observations would influence U.S. policy towards tax havens, including the 1996, check the box rules, and U.S. hostility to OECD attempts in curbing Ireland's BEPS tools, and why, in spite of public disclosure of tax avoidance by firms such as Google, Facebook, and Apple, with Irish BEPS tools, little has been done by the U.S. to stop them. Lower foreign tax rates entail smaller credits for foreign taxes and greater ultimate U.S. tax collections Hines and Rice, 1994. Deiring and Lindsay 2009, offer evidence that U.S. firms with foreign affiliates in certain tax havens pay lower foreign taxes and higher U.S. taxes than do otherwise similar large U.S. companies. Research in June to September 2018 confirmed U.S. multinationals as the largest global users of tax havens and BEPS tools. U.S. multinationals use tax havens more than multinationals from other countries which have kept their controlled foreign corporations' regulations. No other non-haven OECD country records as high a share of foreign profits booked in tax havens as the United States. This suggests that half of all the global profits shifted to tax havens are shifted by U.S. multinationals. By contrast, about 25% accrues to EU countries, 10% to the rest of the OECD, and 15% to developing countries. Torslav et al., 2018. 
In 2019, non-academic groups, such as the Council on Foreign Relations, realized the scale of U.S. corporate use of tax havens. Well over half the profits that American companies report earning abroad are still booked in only a few low tax havens places that, of course, are not actually home to the customers, workers, and taxpayers facilitating most of their business. A multinational corporation can route its global sales through Ireland, pay royalties to its Dutch subsidiary and then funnel income to its Bermudian subsidiary—taking advantage of Bermuda's corporate tax rate of zero. Tax justice groups interpreted Heinz research as the U.S. engaging in tax competition with higher tax nations i.e. the U.S. exchequer earning excess taxes at the expense of others. The 2017 TCJA seems to support this view with the U.S. exchequer being able to levy a 15.5% repatriation tax on over $1 trillion of untaxed offshore profits built up by U.S. multinationals with BEPS tools from non-U.S. revenues. Had these U.S. multinationals paid taxes on these non-U.S. profits in the countries in which they were earned, there would have been the little further liability to U.S. taxation. Research by Zuckman and Wright 2018 estimated that most of the TCJA repatriation benefit went to the shareholders of U.S. multinationals, and not the U.S. exchequer. Academics who study tax havens attribute Washington's support of U.S. corporate use of tax havens to a political compromise between Washington, and other higher tax OECD nations, to compensate for shortcomings of the U.S. worldwide tax system. Heinz had advocated for a switch to a territorial tax system, as most other nations use, which would remove U.S. multinational need for tax havens. In 2016, Heinz, with German tax academics, showed that German multinationals make little use of tax havens because their tax regime, a territorial system, removes any need for it. Heinz research was cited by the Council of Economic Advisers. C. In drafting the TCJA legislation in 2017, and advocating for moving to a hybrid, territorial, tax system framework. Concepts There are a number of notable concepts in relation to how individuals and corporates engage with tax havens. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Captured state. Some notable authors on tax havens describe them as captured states by their offshore finance industry, where the legal, taxation and other requirements of the professional service firms operating from the tax haven are given higher priority to any conflicting state needs. The term is particularly used for smaller tax havens, with examples being Antigua, the Seychelles, and Jersey. However, the term captured state", has also been used for larger and more established OECD and EU offshore financial centers or tax havens. Ronan Palin has noted that even where tax havens started out as «trading centers», they can eventually become «captured» by powerful foreign finance and legal firms who write the laws of these countries which they then exploit." 
Tangible examples include the public disclosure in 2016 of Amazon Inc.'s Project Goldcrest tax structure, which showed how closely the state of Luxembourg worked with Amazon for over two years to help it avoid global taxes. Other examples include how the Dutch government removed provisions to prevent corporate tax avoidance by creating the Dutch Sandwich BEPS tool, which Dutch law firms then marketed to US corporations. When former venture capital executive at ABN AMRO Holding NV Jupe Wijn becomes State Secretary of Economic Affairs in May 2003. It's not long before the Wall Street Journal reports about his tour of the U.S., during which he pitches the New Netherlands tax policy to dozens of American tax lawyers, accountants, and corporate tax directors. In July 2005, he decides to abolish the provision that was meant to prevent tax dodging by American companies, in order to meet criticism from tax consultants. <laughs> Preferential tax ruling Preferential tax rulings PTR can be used by a jurisdiction for benign reasons, for example, tax incentives to encourage urban renewal. However, PTRs can also be used to provide aspects of tax regimes normally found in traditional tax havens. For example, while UK citizens pay full taxes on their assets, foreign citizens legally resident in the UK pay no taxes on their global assets, as long as they are left outside of the UK. Thus, for a foreign resident, the UK behaves in a similar way to a traditional tax haven. Some tax academics say that PTRs make the distinction with traditional tax havens matter of degree more than anything else. The OECD has made the investigation of PTRs a key part of its long-term project of combating harmful tax practices. Started in 1998, by 2019, the OECD had investigated over 255 PTRs. The 2014 LuxLeaks disclosure revealed 548 PTRs issued by the Luxembourg authorities to corporate clients of PricewaterhouseCoopers. When the EU Commission fined Apple USD $13 billion in 2016, the largest tax fine in history, they claimed Apple had received preferential tax rulings. In 1991 and 2007. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Tax inversion. Corporations can move their legal headquarters from a higher tax home jurisdiction to a tax haven by executing a tax inversion. A naked tax inversion is where the corporate had little prior business activities in the new location. The first tax inversion was the ''Naked Inversion'' of McDermott International to Panama in 1983. The U.S. Congress effectively banned ''Naked Inversions'' for U.S. corporates by introducing IRS Regulation 7874 in the American Jobs Creation Act of 2004. A «merger tax inversion» is where the corporate overcomes IRS 7874 by merging with a corporation that has a «substantive business presence» in the new location. 
the requirement for a substantive business presence meant that U.S. corporations could only invert to larger tax havens, and particularly OECD tax havens and EU tax havens. Further tightening of regulations by the U.S. Treasury in 2016, as well as the 2017 TCJA U.S. tax reform, reduced the tax benefits of a U.S. corporation inverting to a tax haven. <laughs> Base erosion and profit shifting Even when a corporate executes a tax inversion to a tax haven, it also needs to shift or earnings strip its untaxed profits to the new tax haven. These are called base erosion and profit shifting BEPS techniques. Notable BEPS tools like the double Irish with a Dutch sandwich were used by U.S. corporates to build up untaxed offshore cash reserves of one United States dollar minus two trillion in tax havens like Bermuda, e.g., Apple's Bermuda Black Hole, from 2004 to 2017. As discussed in Section Financial Scale, in 2017, the OCED estimated that BEPS tools shielded USD $100 to USD $200 billion in annual corporate profits from tax, while in 2018, Zuckman estimated that the figure was closer to USD $250 billion per annum. This was despite the 2012-2016 OECD BEPS project. In 2015, Apple executed the largest recorded BEPS transaction in history when it moved USD $300 billion of its IP to Ireland. See Leprechaun Economics in what was called a hybrid tax inversion. The largest BEPS tools are the ones that use intellectual property IP accounting to shift profits between jurisdictions. The concept of a corporate charging its costs from one jurisdiction against its profits in another jurisdiction i.e. transfer pricing is well understood and accepted. However, IP enables a corporate to revalue its costs dramatically. For example, a major piece of software might have cost USD $1 billion to develop in salaries and overheads. IP accounting enables the legal ownership of the software to be relocated to a tax haven where it can be revalued to being worth USD $100 billion, which becomes the new price at which it is charged out against global profits, thus shifting all global profits back to the tax haven. IP has been described as the leading corporate tax avoidance vehicle. Topic: <inaudible> Corporate tax haven. Traditional tax havens, such as the Caribbean or Channel Island havens, are often clear about the tax-free nature of their status to individuals and corporates. However, because of this, they are unable to sign full bilateral tax treaties with other higher tax jurisdictions. Instead, their tax treaties are restricted and limited so as to avoid the use of the tax haven e.g. withholding taxes on transfers to the haven. To solve this issue, other tax havens maintain higher non-zero headline rates of corporate taxation, but instead provide complex and confidential BEPS tools and PTRs which bring the «effective» corporate tax rate closer to zero, they all feature prominently in the leading jurisdictions for IP law see graphic. 
These corporate tax havens or conduit OFCs, further increase respectability by requiring the corporate using their BEPS tools, PTRs to main a substantial presence in the haven, this is called an employment tax, and can cost the corporate circa 2–3% of revenues. However, these initiatives enable the corporate tax haven to maintain large networks of full bilateral tax treaties, that allow corporates based in the haven to shift global untaxed profits back to the haven and onto SYNC OFCs, as shown above. These corporate tax havens strongly deny any association with being a tax haven and maintain high levels of compliance and transparency, with many being OECD whitelisted and are OECD or EU members. Many of the section top 10 tax havens are corporate tax haves. Topic. Conduits and sinks In 2017, the University of Amsterdam's CORPNET Research Group published the results of their multi-year big data analysis of over 98 million global corporate connections. CORPNET ignored any prior definition of a tax haven or any legal or tax structuring concepts, to instead follow a purely quantitative approach. CORPNET's results split the understanding of tax havens into SYNC OFCs, which are traditional tax havens to which corporates route untaxed funds, and conduit OFCs, which are the jurisdictions that create the OECD compliant tax structures that enable the untaxed funds to be routed from the higher tax jurisdictions to the SYNC OFCs. Despite following a purely quantitative approach, CORPNET's top five conduit OFCs and top five SYNC OFCs closely match the other academic section top ten tax havens. CORPNET's conduit OFCs contained several major jurisdictions considered OECD and or EU tax havens, including the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, Switzerland, and Ireland. Conduit OFCs are strongly correlated with modern, corporate tax havens, and SYNC OFCs with the traditional tax havens topic <laughs> tax free wrapper as well as corporate structures tax havens also provide tax free or tax neutral Legal wrappers for holding assets, also known as special purpose vehicles SPVs or special purpose companies SPCs. These SPVs and SPCs are not only free of all taxes, duties, and VAT, but are tailored to the regulatory requirements, and the banking requirements of specific segments. For example, the Zero Tax Section 110 SPV is a major wrapper in the global securitization market. This SPV offers features including orphan structures, which is facilitated to support requirements for bankruptcy remoteness, which would not be allowed in larger financial centers, as it could damage the local tax base, but are needed by banks in securitizations. The Cayman Islands SPC is a structure used by asset managers as it can accommodate asset classes such as intellectual property IP assets, cryptocurrency assets, and carbon credit assets. Competitor products include the Irish QIAIF and Luxembourg SICAV.
Topic: <laughs> Data leaks. Because of their secrecy, some tax havens have been subject to public and non-public disclosures of client account data, the most notable being <laughs> Liechtenstein Tax Affair 2008. In 2008, the German Federal Intelligence Service paid €4.2 million Euros to Heinrich Kieber, a former IT data archivist of LGT Treuhand, a Liechtenstein bank, for a list of 1,250 customer account details of the bank. Investigations and arrests followed relating to charges of illegal tax evasion. The German authorities shared the data with USIRS, and the British HMRC paid GBP £100,000 for the same data. Other governments, notably Denmark and Sweden, refused to pay for the information regarding it as stolen property. The Liechtenstein authorities accused the German authorities of espionage. Topic: British Virgin Islands offshore leaks 2013 In April 2013 the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists ICIJ released a searchable 260 gigabyte database of 2.5 million tax haven client files anonymously leaked to the ICIJ and analyzed with 112 journalists in 58 countries. The majority of clients came from China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, the Russian Federation, and former Soviet republics, with the British Virgin Islands identified as the most important tax haven for Chinese clients, and Cyprus an important tax haven location for Russian clients. Various prominent names were contained in the leaks including, François Hollande's campaign manager, Jean-Jacques Aguirre, Mongolia's finance minister, Bayersog Sangahov, the president of Azerbaijan, the wife of Russia's deputy prime minister, and Canadian politician, Anthony Merchant. Luxembourg leaks 2014 In November 2014, the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists ICIJ released 28,000 documents totaling 4.4 gigabytes of confidential information about Luxembourg's confidential private tax rulings give to PricewaterhouseCoopers from 2002 to 2010 to the benefits of its clients in Luxembourg. This ICIJ investigation disclosed 548 tax rulings for over 340 multinational companies based in Luxembourg. The LuxLeaks disclosures attracted international attention and comment about corporate tax avoidance schemes in Luxembourg and elsewhere. This scandal contributed to the implementation of measures aiming at reducing tax dumping and regulating tax avoidance schemes beneficial to multinational companies. Topic: <laughs> Swiss leaks 2015. In February 2015, French newspaper Le Monde, was given over 3.3 GB of confidential client data relating to a tax evasion scheme allegedly operated with the knowledge and encouragement of the British multinational bank HSBC via its Swiss subsidiary, HSBC Private Bank Suisse. 
The source was French computer analyst Hervé Falciani who provided data on accounts held by over 100,000 clients and 20,000 offshore companies with HSBC in Geneva. The disclosure has been called the biggest leak in Swiss banking history. Le Monde called upon 154 journalists affiliated with 47 different media outlets to process the data, including The Guardian, Suddeutsche Zeitung, and the ICIJ. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Panama Papers 2015. In 2015, 11.5 million documents totaling 2.6 terabytes, detailing financial and attorney client information for more than 214,488 offshore entities, some dating back to the 1970s, that were taken from the Panamanian law firm Mossack Fonseca, were anomalously leaked to German journalist Bastian Obermeier in Suddeutsche Zeitung SZ. Given the unprecedented scale of the data, SZ worked with the ICIJ, as well as journalists from 107 media organizations in 80 countries who analyzed the documents. After more than a year of analysis, the first news stories were published on 3 April 2016. The documents named prominent public figures from around the globe including British Prime Minister David Cameron and the Icelandic Prime Minister Sigmundur Davi Gunnlaugsson. <laughs> Paradise Papers 2017. In 2017, 13.4 million documents totaling 1.4 terabytes, detailing both personal and major corporate client activities of the offshore Magic Circle law firm, Appleby, covering 19 tax havens, were leaked to the German reporters Frederick Obermeier and Bastian Obermeier in Suddeutsche Zeitung SZ. As with the Panama Papers in 2015, SZ worked with the ICIJ and over 100 media organizations to process the documents. They contain the names of more than 120,000 people and companies including Apple, AIG, Prince Charles, Queen Elizabeth II, the President of Colombia Juan Manuel Santos, and U.S. Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross. At 1.4 terabytes in size, this is second only to the Panama Papers of 2016 as the biggest data leak in history. Topic: Countermeasures. The various countermeasures that higher tax jurisdictions have taken against tax havens can be grouped into the following types Transparency. Actions that promote visibility into the entities operating within the tax haven, and including data and information sharing. Blacklists. A coercive tool used by both the OECD and the EU to incur gauge cooperation by tax havens with their transparency initiatives. Specific. Sets of legislative and or regulatory actions targeted at specifically identified issues regarding tax havens. Fundamental. Where the higher tax jurisdictions conduct a reform of their taxation systems to remove to incentives to use tax havens. Topic: Transparency. Topic: U.S. FACTA. 
In 2010, Congress the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act FACTA, which requires foreign financial institutions FFI of broad scope, banks, stock brokers, hedge funds, pension funds, insurance companies, trusts, to report directly to the U.S. Internal Revenue Service IRS all clients who are U.S. persons. Starting January 2014, FATCA requires FFIs to provide annual reports to the IRS on the name and address of each U.S. client, as well as the largest account balance in the year and total debits and credits of any account owned by a U.S. person. In addition, FATCA requires any foreign company not listed on a stock exchange or any foreign partnership which has 10% U.S. ownership to report to the IRS the names and tax identification number TIN of any U.S. owner. FATCA also requires U.S. citizens and green card holders who have foreign financial assets in excess of $50,000 to complete a new Form 8938 to be filed with the 1040 tax return, starting with fiscal year 2010. OECD CRS In 2014, the OECD followed FACTA with the Common Reporting Standard, an information standard for the automatic exchange of tax and financial information on a global level which would already be needed by FACTA to process data. Participating in the CRS from 1 January 2017 onwards are Australia, the Bahamas, Bahrain, Brazil, Brunei Darussalam, Canada, Chile, China, the Cook Islands, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Israel, Japan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Macau, Malaysia, Mauritius, Monaco, New Zealand, Panama, Qatar, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Singapore, Switzerland, Turkey, the United Arab Emirates, Uruguay. Topic: Blacklists. Topic: OECD. At the London G20 summit on the 2nd of April 2009, G20 countries agreed to define a blacklist for tax havens to be segmented according to a four-tier system based on compliance with an internationally agreed tax standard. The list as per the 2nd of April 2009 can be viewed on the OECD website. The four tiers were those that have substantially implemented the standard includes most countries but China still excludes Hong Kong and Macau. Tax havens that have committed to, but not yet fully implemented, the standard includes Montserrat, Nauru, Niue, Panama, and Vanuatu. Financial centers that have committed to, but not yet fully implemented, the standard includes Guatemala, Costa Rica and Uruguay. Those that have not committed to the standard an empty category those countries in the bottom tier were initially classified as being non-cooperative tax havens. Uruguay was initially classified as being incooperative. However, upon appeal the OECD stated that it did meet tax transparency rules and thus moved it up. 
The Philippines took steps to remove itself from the blacklist and Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak had suggested earlier that Malaysia should not be in the bottom tier. In April 2009, the OECD announced through its chief Angel Guria that Costa Rica, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Uruguay have been removed from the blacklist after they had made a full commitment to exchange information to the OECD standards." Despite calls from the former French President Nicolas Sarkozy for Hong Kong and Macau to be included on the list separately from China, they are as yet not included independently, although it is expected that they will be added at a later date. Government response to the crackdown has been broadly supportive, although not universal. Luxembourg Prime Minister Jean-Claude Juncker has criticized the list, stating that it has no credibility for failing to include various states of the USA which provide incorporation infrastructure which are indistinguishable from the aspects of pure tax havens to which the G20 object. As of 2012, 89 countries have implemented reforms sufficient to be listed on the OECD's white list. According to Transparency International half of the least corrupted countries were tax havens. Topic EU In December 2017, EU Commission adopted a blacklist of territories to encourage compliance and cooperation, American Samoa, Bahrain, Barbados, Grenada, Guam, South Korea, Macau, the Marshall Islands, Mongolia, Namibia, Palau, Panama, St. Lucia, Samoa, Trinidad and Tobago, Tunisia, United Arab Emirates. In addition, the Commission produced a grey list of 47 jurisdictions who had already committed to cooperate with the EU to change their rules on tax transparency and cooperation. Only one of the EU's 17 blacklisted tax havens, namely Samoa, was in section top 20 tax havens above. The EU lists did not include any OECD or EU jurisdictions, or any of the section top 10 tax havens. A few weeks later in January 2018, EU Taxation Commissioner Pierre Moscovici, called Ireland and the Netherlands, tax black holes. After only a few months the EU reduced the blacklist further, and by November 2018, it contained only five jurisdictions, American Samoa, Guam, Samoa, Trinidad and Tobago, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. However, by March 2019, the EU blacklist was expanded to 15 jurisdictions including Bermuda, a section top 10 tax havens and the fifth largest sink OFC. On the 27th of March 2019, the European Parliament voted by 505 in favor to 63 against of accepting a new report that likened Luxembourg, Malta, Ireland and the Netherlands and Cyprus to display ing traits of a tax haven and facilitate aggressive tax planning. However, despite this vote, the EU Commission is not obliged to include these EU jurisdictions on the blacklist. Topic: <laughs> Specific Topic: Anti-inversion. To prevent naked tax inversions of U.S. corporations to mostly Caribbean-type tax havens, e.g., Bermuda and the Cayman Islands, the U.S. Congress added Regulation 7874 to the IRS Code with the passing of the American Jobs Creation Act of 2004. 
While the legislation was effective, further U.S. Treasury regulations were required in 2014–2016 to prevent the much larger merger tax inversions, which culminated with the effective block of the proposed 2016 United States dollars $160 billion of Pfizer allergen in Ireland. Since these changes, there have been no further material U.S. tax inversions. Anti-BEPS At the 2012 G20 Los Cabos Summit, it was agreed that the OECD undertake a project to combat base erosion and profit shifting activities by corporates. An OECD BEPS multilateral instrument, consisting of 15 actions designed to be implemented domestically and through bilateral tax treaty provisions, were agreed at the 2015 G20 Antalya Summit. The OECD BEPS Multilateral Instrument MLI, was adopted on 24 November 2016 and has since been signed by over 78 jurisdictions. It came into force in July 2018. The MLI has been criticized for watering down several of its proposed initiatives, including country by country reporting. CBCR and for providing several opt-outs which several OECD and EU tax havens availed of. The U.S. did not sign the MLI. <laughs> Anti-double Irish The Double Irish was the largest BEPS tool in history which by 2015, was shielding over USD $100 billion in mostly U.S. corporate profits from U.S. taxation. When the EU Commission fined Apple €13 billion Euros for using an illegal hybrid double Irish structure, their report noted that Apple had been using the structure from at least as far back as 1991. Several Senate and congressional inquiries in Washington cited public knowledge of the double Irish from 2000 onwards. However, it was not the U.S. who finally forced Ireland to close the structure in 2015, but the EU Commission, and existing users were given until 2020 to find alternative arrangements, two of which e single malt arrangement, were already operating. The lack of action by the U.S., similar to their position with the OECD MLI above, has been attributed to the section U.S. as the largest user and beneficiary of tax havens. However, some commentators note the section fundamental reform of the U.S. corporate tax code by the 2017 TCJA may change this. Topic. Fundamental Topic. UK After losing 22 tax inversions from 2007 to 2010, mostly to Ireland, the UK decided to completely reform its corporate tax code. From 2009 to 2012 the UK reduced its headline corporate tax rate from 28% to 20% and eventually to 19%, changed the UK corporate tax code from a «worldwide tax system» to a «territorial tax system» and created new IP-based BEPS tools including a low-tax patent box. 
In 2014 the Wall Street Journal reported that, "...in U.S. tax inversion deals, UK is now a winner." In a 2015 presentation, the UK HMRC showed that many of the outstanding UK inversions from 2007 to 10 period had returned to the UK as a result of the tax reforms most of the rest had entered into subsequent transactions and could not return, including Shire. U.S. The U.S. followed a broadly similar reform to the U.K. with the passing of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 TCJA, which reduced the U.S. headline corporate tax rate from 35% to 21%, changed the U.S. corporate tax code from a «worldwide tax system» to a hybrid, territorial tax system, and created new IP-based BEPS tools such as the FDII tax, as well as other anti-BEPS tools such as the BEAT tax. In advocating for the TCJA, the President's Council of Economic Advisers C heavily relied on the work of academic James R. Hines, Jr. on the U.S. corporate use of tax havens and the likely responses of U.S. corporations to the TCJA. Since the TCJA, Pfizer has guided global aggregate tax rates that are very similar to what they expected in their aborted 2016 inversion with Allergen plc in Ireland. <laughs> OECD In January 2019, the OECD released a policy note regarding new proposals to combat the BEPS activities of multinationals, which commentators labeled, BEPS 2.0. In its press release, the OECD announced its proposals had the backing of the US, as well as China, Brazil, and India. The new proposals contain more fundamental reforms to corporate taxation around the taxing of profits where a product is consumed, rather than where the product's value is created, as currently done. While the EU had been a long-term advocate of this concept, the US had traditionally blocked it. However, it is believed the passing of the 2017 TCJA has changed Washington's view on U.S. corporate use of tax havens, who still remain the largest users of tax havens in the world. In response to this new OECD initiative, the EU, and the French in particular, dropped their digital tax. Proposal in favor of allowing the OECD BEPS 2.0 initiative reach a conclusion, which it is scheduled to do by 2020. Topic: History. Topic general phases While areas of low taxation are recorded in ancient Greece, tax academics identify what we know as tax havens as being a modern phenomenon, and note the following phases in their development, 19th century New Jersey and Delaware corporations. In the 1880s, New Jersey was in financial difficulty and the governor, Leon Abet, backed a plan by a New York lawyer, Mr. Dill, to create a more liberal regime for establishing corporate structures, including availability off-the-shelf companies, but not non-resident companies. Delaware followed with the General Incorporation Act in 1898, on the basis of lobbying from other New York lawyers. 
Because of the restrictive incorporation regime in the Anglo-Saxon world as a result of the South Sea bubble, New Jersey and Delaware were successful, and though not explicitly tax havens e.g. U.S. federal and state taxes applied, many future tax havens would copy their liberal incorporation regimes, post-World War I. The modern concept of a tax haven is generally accepted to have emerged at an uncertain point in the immediate aftermath of World War I. Bermuda sometimes claims to have been the first tax haven based upon the creation of the first offshore companies legislation in 1935 by the newly created law firm of Conyers Dill and Pearman. However most tax academics identify the zurich zug lichtenstein triangle as the first tax haven hub created during the mid-1920s. Lichtenstein's 1924 civil code created the infamous Anstalt corporate vehicle, while Zurich and Zug developed the Societe Anonyme and other brass plate companies. Tax academic Ronan Palin identifies two of the three major groups of tax havens, as emerging during this period, British Empire-based tax havens. The 1929 court case of Egyptian Delta Land and Investment Co., Ltd. V. Todd in Britain created the non-resident corporation and recognised a British registered company with no business activities in Britain as not liable to British taxation. Tax academic Saul Pachotto noted the creation of such non-resident companies was a loophole which, in a sense, made Britain a tax haven. The ruling applied to the British Empire, including Bermuda, Barbados, and the Cayman Islands. European-based tax havens. The zurich zug lichtenstein triangle expanded and was joined by Luxembourg in 1929 when they created tax-free holding companies. However in 1934, as a reaction to the Global Depression, the Swiss Banking Act of 1934 put bank secrecy under Swiss criminal law. Secrecy and privacy would become an important and distinctive part of the European-based tax havens, in comparison with other tax havens, post-World War II offshore financial centres. Currency controls enacted post-World War II led to the creation of the eurodollar market and the rise in offshore financial centers OFCs. Many of these OFCs were traditional tax havens from the post-World War I phase, including the Caymans and Bermuda, however new centers such as Hong Kong, and Singapore began to emerge. London's position as a global financial centre for these OFCs was secured when the Bank of England ruled in 1957 that transactions executed by UK banks on behalf of a lender and borrower who were not located in the UK, were not to be officially viewed as having taken place in the UK for regulatory or tax purposes, even though the transaction was only ever recorded recorded as taking place in London. The rise of OFCs would continue so that by 2008, the Cayman Islands would be the fourth largest financial centre in the world, while Singapore and Hong Kong had become major regional financial centres by 2010, tax academics would consider OFCs to be synonymous with tax havens, and that most of their services involved taxation, emerging economy-based tax havens. As well as the dramatic rise in OFCs, from the late 1960s onwards, new tax havens began to emerge to service developing and emerging markets, which became Palin's third group. 
The first Pacific tax haven was Norfolk Island 1966, a self-governing external territory of Australia. It was followed by Vanuatu (1970–71), Nauru (1972), the Cook Islands (1981), Tonga (1984), Samoa (1988), the Marshall Islands (1990), and Nauru (1994). All these havens introduced familiar legislation modelled on the successful British Empire and European tax havens, including near zero taxation for exempt companies, and non-residential companies, Swiss-style bank secrecy laws, trust companies laws, offshore insurance laws, flags of convenience for shipping fleets and aircraft leasing, and beneficial regulations for new on online services e.g. gambling, pornography, etc., corporate-focused tax havens. In 1981, the USIRS published the Gordon Report on the use of tax havens by U.S. taxpayers, which highlighted the use by tax havens by U.S. corporations. In 1983, U.S. corporation McDermott International executed the first tax inversion to Panama. The EU Commission showed that Apple Inc. had begun to use the infamous double Irish BEPS tool as early as 1991. U.S. tax academic James R. Hines, Jr. showed in 1994 that U.S. corporations were achieving effective rates of taxation of circa 4% in corporate-focused OECD tax havens like Ireland. When in 2004, the U.S. Congress stopped, "...naked tax inversions." by U.S. corporations to Caribbean tax havens with the introduction of IRS Regulation 7874, a much larger wave of U.S. corporate «merger inversions» started that involved moving to OECD tax havens. A new class of corporate tax haven had emerged that was OECD compliant, transparent, but offered complex base erosion and profit shifting BEPS tools that could achieve net tax rates similar to traditional tax havens. Initiatives by the OECD to curb tax havens would mainly impact Palin's third group of emerging economy-based tax havens, however, the corporate-focused tax havens were drawn from the largest OFCs that had emerged from the British Empire-based tax havens and European-based tax havens, and included the Netherlands, Singapore, Ireland, and the UK, and even reformed traditional tax havens such as Luxembourg, Hong Kong, the Caribbean, the Cayman, Bermuda, and the British Virgin Islands, and Switzerland. The scale of their BEPS activities meant that this group of ten jurisdictions would dominate academic tax haven lists from 2010, including Heinz 2010 list, the Conduit and Sink OFC 2017 list, and Zuckman's 2018 list. Topic Notable events 1929 British Courts Rule in Egyptian Delta Land and Investment Co., Ltd. v. Todd, that a British registered company with no business activities in Britain is not liable to British taxation. Saul Pachotto noted the creation of such non-resident companies was a loophole which, in a sense, made Britain a tax haven. The ruling applied to the British Empire, including Bermuda, Barbados, and the Cayman Islands. 1934. As a reaction to the Global Depression, the Swiss Banking Act of 1934 put bank secrecy under Swiss criminal law. 
the law required absolute silence in respect to a professional secret i.e. accounts in Swiss banks. Absolute means protection from any government, including the Swiss. The law even made inquiry or research into the trade secrets of Swiss banks, a criminal offence. 1981. The U.S. Treasury and the U.S. Attorney General are given, tax havens and their use by United States taxpayers, an overview by Richard A. Gordon Special Counsel for International Taxation at the IRS. The Gordon Report identifies new types of corporate tax havens such as Ireland described as a manufacturing tax haven. 1983. The first officially recognized U.S. corporate tax inversion as McDermott International moves from Texas to tax haven, Panama, 1994. James R. Hines, Jr. publishes the important Hines Rice paper, producing the first academic list of 41 tax havens, including seven major tax havens. The Hines Rice paper used the term profit shifting, and showed that while many tax havens had higher headline tax rates, their effective tax rates were much lower. Hines shows that the U.S. is a major user of tax havens. 2000. The OECD produces its first formal list of 35 tax havens who have met two of three OECD criteria, none of the existing 35 OECD members, or EU 28 members, were listed as tax havens. By 2008, only Trinidad and Tobago met the OECD's criteria to be a tax haven. Academics start using the terms OECD tax havens and EU tax havens. 2000. The FSFIMF define an offshore financial center OFC with a list of 42 to 46 OFCs using a qualitative list of criteria. In 2007, the IMF produced a revised quantitative based list of 22 OFCs, and in 2018, another revised quantitative based list of eight major OFCs who are responsible for 85% of OFC financial flows. By 2010, tax academics consider OFCs and tax havens as synonymous. 2004 U.S. Congress passes the American Jobs Creation Act of 2004 AJCA with IRS Section 7874 that effectively ends naked inversions by U.S. corporations to Caribbean tax havens. 2009 the Tax Justice Network introduced the Financial Secrecy Index FSI and the term «secrecy jurisdiction» to highlight issues in regard to OECD-compliant countries who have high tax rates and do not appear on academic lists of tax havens, but have transparency issues. 2010 James R. Hines, Jr. publishes a list of 52 tax havens, and unlike all past tax haven lists, were scaled quantitatively by analyzing corporate investment flows. The Hines 2010 list was the first to estimate the 10 largest global tax havens, only two of which, Jersey and the British Virgin Isles, were on the OECD's 2000 list. 2015. Medtronic completes the largest tax inversion in history in a US$48 billion merger with Covidian plc in Ireland, while Apple Inc. complete the largest hybrid tax inversion in history moving USD $300 billion of intellectual property to Ireland called Leprechaun Economics. By 2016, the U.S. Treasury tightened the inversion 
conversion rules, causing Pfizer to abort their US$160 billion United States dollars merger with Allergen plc. 2017. The University of Amsterdam's CORPNET group using on a purely quantitative approach, splits the understanding of OFCs into conduit OFCs and sink OFCs. CORPNET's lists of top 5 conduit OFCs and top 5 sync OFCs, matched 9 of the top 10 havens in Heinz 2010 list, only differing in the United Kingdom, which only transformed their tax code in 2009-12. 2017 the EU Commission produces its first formal list of tax havens with 17 countries on its 2017 blacklist and 47 on its 2017 greylist, however, as with the previous 2010 OECD list, none of the jurisdictions are OECD or EU 28 countries, nor are they in the list of Section Top 10 tax havens. 2018. Tax academic Gabriel Zuckman et alia estimates aggregate corporate profit shifting i.e. BEPS is shielding over US$250 billion per year from taxes. Zuckman's 2018 list of top 10 havens matched nine of the top 10 havens in Heinz 2010 list, but with Ireland as the largest global haven. Zuckman shows that U.S. corporations are almost half of all profits shifted. 2019 European Parliament votes to accept a report by 505 votes in favour to 63 against, identifying five «EU tax havens» that should be included on the EU Commission list of tax havens. See also Topic. Further reading Topic. Academic papers The following are the most cited papers on «tax havens» as ranked on the IDEAS – REPIC database of economic papers, at the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, papers marked were cited by the EU Commission 2017 summary as the most important research on tax havens. Topic major books with at least 300 citations on Google Scholar Saul Piccolo 1992. International Business Taxation PDF. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 978-0899307770. Raymond W. Baker, 2005. Capitalism's Achilles' Heel, Dirty Money, and How to Renew the Free Market System. John Wiley & Sons. ISBN 978-0471644880. Ronan Palin, Richard Murphy, Christian Chivognu, 2009. Tax Havens: How Globalization Really Works. Cornell University Press. ISBN 978-0-8014-7614-5. Nicholas Shaxon Treasure Islands, Uncovering the Damage of Offshore Banking and Tax Havens. Palgrave Macmillan. ISBN 978-0-230-10501-0. Jane G. Gravel Tax Havens, International Tax Avoidance and Evasion PDF. 
Congressional Research Service. ISBN 978-1482527681. Gabriel Zuckman, 2016. The Hidden Wealth of Nations, The Scourge of Tax Havens. University of Chicago Press. ISBN 978-0226422640. Topic Various articles Formney, D., and Von Hagen, J. 2012. Fiscal Federalism in Times of Crisis, CEPR Discussion Papers 9154, CEPR. Discussion Papers. Henry, James S. October 2003. The Blood Bankers, Tales from the Global Underground Economy. New York, New York, Four Walls Eight Windows. ISBN 978-1-568-58-254-2. Morris's, Andrew P. 2010. Offshore Financial Centers and Regulatory Competition. Washington, The AEI Press. ISBN 978-0-8447-4324-2. Skevola, Carlo, Snyderova, Karina January 2010. Offshore Jurisdictions Guide. Geneva, Switzerland, CSNP Fiduciaire. ISBN 978-1-60594-433-3. From the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, New Bank Leak shows how rich exploit tax haven loopholes. The 8th of July 2014, hidden in plain sight. New York, just another island haven. The 3rd of July 2014, Sun and Shadows. How an island paradise became a haven for money. The 9th of June 2014, leaked records reveal offshore holdings of China's elite. The 21st of January 2014. Secret files expose offshore's global impact. The 3rd of April 2013. Alan Rusbridger. The 27th of October 2016. Panama: The Hidden Trillions, Part One of Two. The New York Review of Books. Equals equals notes. <laughs>